it's Christine here with another episode of the Co-Living Code, and this one will be fun. I know that I've, I say that about most episodes, they are fun, but this one will be very unique, I promise you that. So I'm gonna go ahead and read you uh, Justin's bio real quick before we launch in. Um, Justin Arbavi is, the film is a film producer and founder of Superba House. And that is here in Los Angeles. It's uh, the first official co-live work incubator for filmmakers. So that's what makes this episode very unique. Um, his producing skills were honed by working below the line in various film departments, including camera, production sound, picture editing, and sound design. And throughout 2016-17, Justin witnessed the growing housing problem here in Los Angeles firsthand as it began to take effect increasingly amongst his coworkers on set. In 2018, Justin launched Superba House, a sprawling 3,200 square foot home, a live work space perched on the apex of Adams Hill in East Hollywood. Now, Justin, you have already promised me that you're going to add special effects to this yeah. video, he asked if he could do. Um, what did you ask me again <laughs> before we started? Yeah. Oh, if we could just have agency over the editing, so we can go ahead and CGI any kind of uh, you know uh, smarter people than I or more good looking people. I could probably just do a quick little face swap. You know, technology's there, and so okay, it'll be like Brad Pitt or Bradley Cooper or something. <laughs> yeah, most likely Bradley Cooper. Uh, yeah, definitely in that lane. Oh my God, that's awesome. So yeah, of course I told Justin, hey, I'm giving you the raw footage. Like then my team doesn't have to touch it. So you can put some ma magic, some lighting. So uh, so Great. yeah, you po podcast yeah. listeners might want to check out the YouTube channel because uh, yeah. Justin's going to make it fancy for us, especially since we're, we're in the uh, film mecca. Coming so right we, up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. I mean, Justin, had we had lunch yesterday. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this, this yeah. will definitely be a fun, uh, fun interview. Um, and it's such a cool, cool concept. So let's start there. Like, you know, I know obviously, you know, it was the housing crisis. You see how much rent is here in Los Angeles County. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. So talk about how you launched your house. Yeah, totally. So I worked in production for uh, the last five years, you know, various uh, roles, production audio for quite a while that gave me the opportunity to kind of bounce around, experience, uh, you know, many different crews, meet a ton of people. Um, you know, work in the various contexts of film, so some documentary stuff. And in the midst of that uh, journey or experience, uh, time and time again, you know, you hear from your cohorts sort of how, how challenging the lifestyle can be as a freelancer. Uh, you know, it's very feast or famine. Um, and, you know, combining that with the rising cost of housing and just the general, you know, the general difficulties associated with housing in Los Angeles. Sometimes they're asking for really outlandish first and last month's rent with a down payment. I mean, that's like, you know, that's, that's your whole account sometimes and it can be really challenging. So we really strove to uh, create and dial in a situation where filmmakers can uh, experience the benefits of co-living that's, you know, goes along with any s sort of core concept that just that cross pollination and that kind of like support system that goes along with it. Everyone that lives here lives under market value. And so it's really just this kind of like excellent kind of formula that lends itself to the synergy and the morale that I think is, is key. It's, it's a lot of upside for a filmmaker to be in a situation like that. Absolutely. No, I love that. And you bought the house. When did you buy the house again? We bought it at the end of December last year. Okay, so exactly a year. You guys have been yeah. running, operating, mm -hmm. having fun there. And there's, is there a five, five bedroom, five roommate? Five bedroom, 3,200 okay. square foot, um, not including a garage space that's going to get transformed into, you know, a, a co work kind of area, complete with editing suites and the works. Right now, it's kind of being utilized as sort of a rec zone where we can kind of get our functional fitness on. There's a sauna in there. As filmmakers, I mean, it's, it's a hard lifestyle, you know? So, balance is, is a very key aspect. And so we're really, uh, our aim is, is definitely to, to, to provide those sorts of amenities that uh, lend themselves to that, to that balance. Is it five guys in your house? Um, is it girls and guys? Girls and guys. Right now the ratio is four to one, but I imagine spur of a house two, spur of a house three, uh, those are probably going to be more split down the middle, 50-50. Um, but, you know. Yeah. Are they, you said one's an actor, right? Like kind of just what's the, what's yeah, the totally. that they have in film? 
Uh huh. So, um, so Danny is a director, editor. Um, he's uh, currently actually producing and directing a feature film with Brandon T. Jackson. Uh, he was the uh, Al Pacino character in Tropic Thunder. I don't know if you guys remember. Uh, yeah. What do you mean, you people? Um, yeah. So they're actually in in uh, in development right now. They went to AFM this year, and we're just kind of meandering. We're approached. Brandon Brandon was recognized. Hey, you Brandon Jackson, like I got this thing going on, and so they they actually got verbally at this juncture still verbally, but they actually got offered a one point five million dollar deal to produce their film. So that's really exciting. Then we've got Saul, who's an actor. He's been all over. He's been on Boardwalk Empire. He's been on. True Detective, NCIS, um, Marvel's Iron Fist on Netflix. So he's pretty prolific. Um, and then we have Tiffany, who is an assistant camera extraordinaire and aspiring DP. Um, and she's got some really amazing credits. Tiffany Murray, check her out, her IMDb page. Um, and then we've got Stephen is an entertainment lawyer. And so, Yeah. Yeah. No, super cool. And, and again, so, it, you know, you first reached out, you said, hey, we're going to get ready to really take this to the next level. You guys are looking at opening uh, more locations, right? It's definitely. I mean, we're, you know, we're profiting. Everyone's stoked to be here. And there's, there's already like a major amount of upside going on. So, I mean, I feel kind of ready. The other thing that's kind of happening that's really interesting is everyone's kind of starting to, to harmonize in their professional endeavors. Like we're starting to work together. It's almost becoming like kind of a, like a little bit of a startup, like together with the, with the housemates, you know? So Saul's head of community, uh, director of community, uh, uh, Danny's going to be head of production. Um, you know, Tiffany's our project manager. Um, and so, so yeah. Um, I love it. I kind of forgot where we, how we got no, here. That's awesome. So it's kind of like, yeah, the housemates that are living there get to uh, be a part of the growth of yeah. the concept. Yeah, really yeah. cool. And then have you guys hosted any events at the house in like the last year? We've had little kind of cozy screenings. Um, Danny has a screening scheduled. He edited for this show called Blark and Son that just got picked up by Comedy Central online. Um, and uh, actually, uh, Christopher Mintz Ploss is the lead voice actor. It's like a comedic <laughs> puppet show. It's super funny. You guys got to check it out. Um, and so they're doing a screening here on the 4th of January. Um, check out our Instagram. We'll probably be posting images and kind of keeping you guys posted on that stuff. Um, and then internally we do have like, kind of like, you know, twice a month we'll get together and have like, I get, you know, we don't run it like a mastermind, like one for one, but it's, it's in that lane for sure where we kind of just get together and brainstorm problems. And, um, and then we also have like another kind of team building kind of uh, anchor point that we have is, we have a little fitness kind of competition every year that was actually inspired by, not every year, every month, that was inspired by uh, the Rogan October Fitness Challenge. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that. I know, what did he do in October again? I'm trying to remember, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there was, like a, there was like a sober October thing at one point, but oh, yeah. somewhere along the line, they actually adapted it to also have this fitness aspect to it where they wear this device, I think it's called MyZone, and the MyZone tracks not only your steps like a Fitbit would, but your heart rate, and it translates into points, so effectively it gamifies your fitness based on your, so if your like, heart rate is like at least 145, you get a certain amount of points, if it goes up to like 160, 170, you get more points, and then like, I think it also factors in how long you've been working out, right? Yeah, uh, oh, that's super then, cool. Yeah, and then at the end of every month, you know, there's a looming benefit, like maybe a discount on rent, or yeah, there's there's very. That's what you guys did in your house. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. Because we do, I, I was telling, we do house challenges too, and it could be fitness, it could be business, it could be personal. Every month it's different, and we collectively vote. Mm. Um, and so yeah, I think this, I think for January we might do a con, it's daily content. So you pick one platform. It could be medium blog posts. It could be YouTube videos. Mm. Uh, Facebook, yeah. Instagram posts. So you have to put one piece of content out every ah. single day. Um, it's actually a 90 day challenge that my friends are doing. And then I think our house will start the first 30 and then whoever wants to go the whole 90 could go. But uh, yeah, we, we do some fun. We did vegetarian or like pescatarian one month. And that was like, <laughs> what do you like? That? <laughs> There's a lot of meat eaters in the house. So not, not eating uh, meat. Um, we've done the no alcohol and that went really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think you're right. I think it's fun too, right? Cause you guys yeah. are doing it as a group. So it's like that peer support motivation. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's nice to have that accountability. Absolutely. Oh, without a even, doubt. Even in a fun context, like, you know, like having these challenges that it does play into that and everyone just, it's like, it kind of contributes to that effect of everyone's lifting each other up in various forms. So that's just one but of But that's cool. So you do a discount on rent on the winner mm-hmm. and then the other people chip in to make up that amount or how do you do that? No, I mean, we're in a position, we're comfy enough that we can just loom that benefit and not feel, you know. Oh, cool. Because I'm not, I'm not answering anyone at this juncture. There are no investors. It's just me. So at this <laughs> you point, make the rules. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so um, let's see here. My next question. Oh, well, first talk about, because you mentioned this yesterday at lunch, and I was like, that is so freaking cool. So you said you guys have these revenue share things, just mm-hmm. kind of, again, it's your house, you own it, you can yeah. do whatever you want, but y- that mm-hmm. you guys have filmed cooking shows in your kitchen, yeah. and the person that brings the deal in, so maybe explain that. They get the 50%, yeah. and you guys split the revenue. Right. So that's kind of another way that I, I figured we could contribute to the morale and kind of galvanize or, or incentivize everyone to start working together and, 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 um, and form those professional bonds with each other. Um, we have sort of a more collective business model uh, where if, okay, so first let me just circle back and say one of the ways that we're able to produce revenue is by renting out our kitchen because it has like an island with the stove facing outward. So it's kind of that, it gives you that production design that you need for a cooking show where you can just face head on the cook and they can kind of like, Hey, you know, interact straight direct camera. Right. As opposed to if you had a stove facing the wall, you know, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be very interesting visually. Right. So, um, we've been able to attract three clients up until this point that, uh, have filmed their cooking shows in here. And, We've set up our uh, we've set up our business model such that whoever is the finder of that client gets fifty percent, and then we split the rest of the revenue amongst the housemates. Um, and uh, so yeah, so that's essentially that business model is going to play in in a number of frontiers. So we have a podcast studio that's currently in its inception. Um, we've got you know twenty five k towards a fully spec'd out like four k cinema camera from Black Magic and my extreme capabilities. So that's going to be another frontier that we can kind of orient our, our team towards attracting clients and attracting revenue and in the process of doing so, um, apply that business model. Yay. Then we film part two in your like professional podcast studio. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's awesome. So, um, what is your, Justin, like tell everybody, what is your favorite part about co-living? Favorite part about co-living? Definitely going to have to be just the overall cross pollination in all its forms. Um, there's just all these different ways that we synergize with each other, whether that's sharing insights and kind of mentoring each other or just straight up, you know, our networks, the way our networks combine. And in addition to that, as a filmmaker, I mean, there's just, there's, there's numerous upsides. We more than any other industry, we absolutely need each other to be able to produce content. You can't do it alone. You have to have other individuals with other expertise, right? So there's just all these various forms of sort of cross pollination and synergy that, that occur that are massively underestimated. It's it's such a privilege to exist in this ecosystem like this. And I think it's, it's, it's only a matter of time before this becomes, I think it's going to catch on like wildfire. I think this can be applied to a number of contexts, right? Like we're going to start seeing like co-living for people that are podcasters, co-living for people that are coders. And it's just going to, it's going to niche down, you know, uh, in perpetuity until it's just every (laughs) nook and cranny of the professional world. No, I love it. We've always used the example. Yeah, ours is, you know, strictly entrepreneurs and business owners. But mm. it's like, I always say that, I'm like, there could be musicians, there could be mm-hmm. artists, like, yeah. there could be, I mean, I think as long as there's that common thread mm. of some commonality between everybody, um, it makes it just such a cool environment. And it's different than roommates. And I try to tell everybody that it's done with intention. Like you guys are intentionally, you know, everybody's in the film industry and you guys are having a podcast room and you're, ha- yeah. you know, it's a very intentional way of living and it's set up right. that way. It's not just throw random people in a house from Craigslist, yeah. uh, you know? And so I think that that is what really makes it work. And that's cool. How did you come up with the name Superba House? I meant to ask that. Yeah, so La Superba is actually a red giant star that's out there. That I, I think I stumbled across it like back when I was, was kind of on like a, a astronomy kick, came across that star. And then I ended up, this house is on a street called Superba. 
And so quite literally, like Ooh. the stars sort of aligned. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and also people were kind of like, it's such a cool street name, the Superba, I love that. And so first we were Vista Superba, and then and I was like, ah, it's kind of a mouthful, you know, Superba House kind of has that like, just kind of ring to it, it's kind of snappy, you know, it and is. yeah, oh, yeah. It is, that is so cool. You'll have to, you, on your website, I know you're, you guys are putting it together. Yeah, you should tell that story. Uh, cool. Yeah. Know the name that is super cool what a great story i love that um and then will each house like would it be house number two superba house number two number three yeah. or will each house have like a sub name i mean you know that thought process is still fluid at this juncture So because ours is yeah. like the epic entrepreneur house then uh, it's the entourage house now it's the hustle yeah. house so yeah. the founding founding on our house anyways the founding members get to name the house so we have to all collectively agree the first group of five and yeah, so our house is this house in LA, and it definitely is a hustle house because it really works all the time. Um, so, so we're just staying true to the name, that's for sure. So, uh, yeah, maybe you let your housemates when they move in, you know, each one you open. I love that. Take like mm -hmm. a pick. So, yeah, it's still kindred quarters, but then the sub name of each house. Right. So we can tell them apart. Um, perfect. So, let's see here. Next question. Um, you guys said you don't have a separate like co working space right now, but you guys are going to build that out. I mean, it's a spacious house, um, and we do have we have the screening room with 120 inches of 4K and uh, oh theater <laughs> big old theaters like really nice theater seats are on the way, um, and that's that became the home base for pre production for uh, the branded T Jackson feature. And that's another thing I know I'm going on a tangent here, but just the work ethic being contagious like everyone's just seeing each other like going at just getting after it and really working hard towards their goals and it's contagious um but so let me circle back um you know workspaces we, we have a couple i mean there's the deck is like probably 1500 square feet so uh you know once we fully furnish it there's going to be little kind of sections where you can set up shop and have your meetings and um we've got our dining table over here so there's definitely you know fair game for, That's for super cool. do you guys work all different hours in the house are you guys on a similar schedule so we definitely cross paths most often during midday so probably between like 12 to 3 all we will have our little impromptu meetings um where we just kind of keep each other posted and update each other on the goings on of our personal endeavors yeah. um, and how we can help each other and you know um and uh but yeah and then we have like you know our night hours are 12 to 7 those are kind of our quiet hours um but again as freelancers schedules are pretty malleable uh it's not like nine to five for sure it's definitely it's not that uh you know it's not that cemented Awesome. And then um, what, like, so, let's see, do you guys, do you have any software right now that you're using? I mean, I know you guys have been there, like it's pretty, pretty much been the same crew. Yeah. Um, like, do you do leases, by the way? Or is it just? Yeah. Like, oh, you do? Yeah. How long are your lease terms? A uh, month to month. Oh, okay. So one month minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But I know you don't have a lot of turnover in that house. So um, yeah. and what kind of technology, like what are you guys using on the back end to schedule, to communicate, to right. the house? Yeah. Yeah. So um, just for like, uh, you know, regular communication, it's just a text group and an email group for project management. We've been using Trello, um, but we're exploring a more uh, comprehensive option. I, I've heard a lot of really good things about Slack. Um, I, I use for my productions, there, there are specific softwares that are oriented towards the, the needs for a production, um, like Yamdu or Studio Binder. And so we're, we're currently amidst our exploration of those, of those softwares of what, you know, what's going to be, what we're going to land on for the medium to long term. Yeah. Um, but for now, Trello is, is, is enough for us to. No, I know, right? To manage. No, and that's what we had started on, too. We had used Trello to manage the houses in the beginning. So, um, yay, awesome. And then um, your, what is your opinion on the future of co-living as an entire industry? Like, oh, man, the sky's the limit. I, I think, I like, you know, I think I touched on this earlier. I think it's going to be every niche is going to get their own co-living situation. And I think it's only a matter of time before people catch on to the upside of, of all those sort of cross-pollination benefits that I mentioned earlier and just the synergy that can happen when you're all like-minded individuals working towards a similar goal, amazing things can happen. Um, and so gradually people are going to more and more gravitate towards these co-living style situations. And even businesses I think are going to start to be, to be run out of those core concepts. 
No, I think you're exactly right. I think you hit the nail on the head with that for sure. <laughs> um, and just having those amazing, you know, benefits of just, just these unique things that you guys are putting in your home, like we have float tank and like saunas and just, you know, you guys are building that ideal life, mm. you know, for, yeah. for yeah. what you guys want. Sure. Absolutely. I love it. Well, awesome. Justin, well, thank you so much. I knew this was going to be a blast. Yeah. Work yeah. your editing magic on this, <laughs> on this episode. Um, and then, of course, we're going to have all your contact, de your contact yeah. details. Okay. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, so that people can find you. And then me personally, I'll have to head out and, and get a tour of the home sometime soon since you're right here in L.A. And uh, yes, yeah, so keep yeah. on. And let us know when you guys open more locations for sure. It's going to be fun to watch your growth. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. It was a great time. Yep. Same here. Thanks. Bye. Bye.